Today's first reading is taken from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, and in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. We will read Psalm 104 responsively by verse. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All that belong to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide their face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. The Lord rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord. Today's second reading is taken from Romans, the eighth chapter. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, 
so that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Please stand. Glory to you, O Lord. Please stand. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. It's time for our children's message, so I've got something interesting, I hope, for our two young friends. Oh, I'm not going to let you sit down, though. Oh, we got four young friends. Awesome. No, no, you can't sit down over there. We got our little cart over here. So here's our cart. I guess you can sit on the edge if you want to, but we certainly can't have anybody being too tired. What do you think I have in here? Any guesses? It's nothing to eat. (laughs) Nope, nothing to eat at all. As a matter of fact, it's a little weird, but you know what? Being a little weird can be kind of fun. Yeah, that was, that was a bunch of people's reactions when they first saw this. I'll slide this crate under there. I brought a head with me. Yes, it's a weird head. It's kind of based on a wig form. I'll hold it over here so the choir folks can see. And uh, yes, I did make it, and uh, it is goofy. But there's a reason why I have a head here. Does this look like Pastor Dave? No. No. Does this look like the people who work at McDonald's or Carnes? No. Who does it look like? Who do you think? It kind of looks like Jesus. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to be not Jesus, but one of Jesus' friends. What's the name that the Bible uses for Jesus' friends? Do you remember? Peter is one of them, yes, that's his given name, but I'm thinking more of the generic over, overall name. Starts with the letter D, disciples. Jesus had 12 friends, they were all guys, and he had more friends than that, but they, the Bible focuses on the 12. And these 12 guys followed Jesus all over the place for three years, and they listened to him tell stories, and they listened to him Uh, you know, talk to people, and they watched when he did miracles, and it was all good. 
So do you think these, these 12 guys would understand that Jesus was God's son? You'd think they would, but they didn't get it. So here's where I need my helper. So after Jesus had died and then come back, he sent the Holy Spirit to help these 12 guys get the point. Can you reach over top of everybody's head or do you need to come around? I think we can reach if we're careful. We're not going to set him on fire. Well, a little bit on fire. Controlled fire. Thank you very much. Okay, so it was a day called Pentecost. And Pentecost was already a festival for Jewish people. So they had visitors all over the place hanging out. Oh, now don't blow the candle out. <laughs> that would defeat the purpose. They had visitors all over the place in the city of Jerusalem. And the disciples were nervous. You see, they were still scared because Jesus had left them. Jesus came back to life on what day? What day? Wonderful Wednesday. I like that. But that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking of Easter Sunday. Jesus came back to life on Easter Sunday, and then he talked some more, and he did some more miracles, and he walked around with people, and he just basically showed folks that, that he was alive and death had not won the end victory. But then it was time for Jesus to go up into heaven to be with God, our Heavenly Father. So Jesus went up on this awesome cloud, and all the disciples stood there watching. And then they thought, now what? So they were still scared and nervous. So they went back up to that same room where they had had supper with Jesus before he even was crucified, and they sat there and they twiddled their thumbs. The Bible doesn't tell us they twiddled their thumbs, but they sat hanging around not doing anything. And then they made the sound, God made the sound of a mighty wind. And on this windy sound came tongues of fire. Just like this one, kind of. And a Flame rested on the head of each one of those disciples. We could even call them dopey disciples because they really didn't get it yet. And the flame came on, and that was what we think of when we think of God's Holy Spirit. Do you see any other flames in here this morning? The ones on the altar? Yes. And what about up there on our banner? There's seven flames up there. Yep. Yep. So the flame is a symbol of the Holy Spirit because of this Bible passage from the book of Acts. What a, you, you can hear the chandeliers. The chandeliers, they do kind of look like flames. They got candles that, yeah, that look, the light bulbs look like flames. Yeah, they're just light bulbs. They are just light bulbs. The one up there flickers really nicely. I just noticed that. Very cool. Anyway, so these dumb disciples had God's Holy Spirit come upon them with a flame, and this flame did something awesome. It taught them other languages. Does anybody here speak another language? <clears throat> when I was in, in uh, middle school and high school, I took French. Boy, was I bad at French. When I went to college, I took German. Wasn't much better at German. I can count to 20 in each of those languages, and that's pretty good. When I went to seminary, I took Greek, and that's a whole different alphabet. Oh, my gosh. But I speak English best of all. Now, Jesus knew that his disciples had to talk to all those people that were coming from all over the world to Jerusalem for the Festival of Pentecost. And he knew that his dumb disciples didn't speak any other languages. So when the flame of the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, all of a sudden, they could speak different languages. And that was just one gift of the Spirit. God's Spirit can help us out in so many ways. It's that part of God that comes and helps us out even when we don't see a cross or we don't think about creation because that's the third part of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we're going to leave this guy lit up for the rest of church, 
And we're going to remember how God touched those dumb disciples and helped them to not only speak other languages, but tell the whole world about Jesus and how he had come back to life at Easter and how he was now our Lord and our Savior. So can we put our hands together for a prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for silly illustrations and for your Holy Spirit, which touches each and every one of us. Lord, even if we don't see a flame, we trust in your promise to be with us. Be with each and every one of these young people and all of those who are young at heart so that we would sense your presence in all we say and all we do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. You think if, if I leave this here, people are going to figure that the disciple is watching them? Maybe. If we make people nervous out there, it'll keep them at attention. What do you think? All right, we're good with that. Thanks, everybody. Put this over here a little bit. There we have the guy watching. There we go. May the words of my mouth <clears throat> and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God brings confusion and clarity. The confusion would have happened when the mighty wind came down and the flames came out of nowhere and everybody would have been going, ah! I added the sound effects. <laughs> but the clarity comes when these disciples realize they can speak to people through other languages. And not only are they speaking other languages, they're sharing the good news with clear thoughts and concise words. We've got to remember that these disciples were not academic elites. These were fishermen and a tax collector and maybe a few farmers thrown in for good measure. Today is Pentecost Sunday the day we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh-oh, our flame went out. Huh. Thank you. Uh, is it going to stay? I actually had electric tea candles, and I thought, no, I can't use a battery-operated tea candle. It just wouldn't be a good representation of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's Pentecost Sunday. We're remembering the coming of the Holy Spirit. Some folks are actually wearing red. That's awesome. Pentecost Sunday is considered to be the birthday of God's church. Not of Christianity, per se, because Christianity happened when Jesus was resurrected, and we say, Alleluia. But the birthday of the church, because it's a time when we got kind of into sharing the good news, which is pretty much what worship and being a member of a church is all about. So, did you know that today is the third most important day in the church calendar? It is, following only Christmas and Easter. Today is a good day. A good day. Anytime anybody talks about Pentecost, 
I have one vivid image in my head. We would have a special service with another Lutheran church in Western New York, and we would read verses from the Book of Acts in different languages. It was a joint service, so between the two congregations, we had a fair number of languages represented. We had Hungarian, Norwegian, Greek, Spanish, German, Swedish, and of course, French. I think it really did help us to understand just what it might have been like on that Pentecost Sunday. Have you ever been on a Zoom call when everybody talks all at once? Or even a Zoom worship service when everybody prays the Lord's Prayer together? I have, and it's a little confusing, but what it mostly does is it, it echoes. It's like, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, who art, who art, who art, who art, in heaven, in heaven, in heaven, in heaven. And it's a little weird, once again, but it also reminded me of the power of the voice, the gift of tongues. So maybe on that day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples and they started talking in all kinds of languages, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, all those languages, you did an awesome job, by the way. That's the hardest Bible verse in all of the whole year. Truly, Pentecost is a gift from God. And it enabled those dumb disciples to become brilliant apostles. This is the day when that distinction gets made. Nine times out of ten, people don't think about the difference between a disciple and an apostle. Disciples are students. That's the definition if you look it up. Apostles are ones who share a message. And it was because of the power of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit that those dumb disciples became brilliant apostles. So, we hear about other times and other ways that languages became confusing. The Tower of Babel is an example where God didn't want people to speak uh, the same language and so God mixed up their languages because those people were trying very hard to be like God. But instead, God had different plans for this reading. This time, language was not a punishment, but a gift. And the reason is because the disciples weren't self-serving, they were serving God. They were not out to make a name for themselves. When the disciples woke up that morning, they weren't saying, oh, we're going to become famous today. We're going to speak to 3,000 people and baptize them all and convert them all to Jesus' faith. They were probably still pondering on the words that Jesus spoke in Acts 1 just before he was ascended. This is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's the job description of an apostle. And of course, Jesus' promise was fulfilled. It's a miracle. And of course, some in the crowd were perplexed. Some sneered. Some said they were drunk. But the disciples were amazed, confused, frightened, and maybe even a little bit amused. I got to tell you, Getting back to that Pentecost reading when I was in high school, the one lady whose grandmother had come from Sweden and had a Swedish Bible, she had to focus so hard not to crack up when she read the Hurskabur Nahin from the parts of the Swedish Bible. 
it's okay to laugh a little bit as well as share the joy. What a wonderful thing to do, to be a witness to the awesome power of God, the loving grace, the humor of life and joy, to share the good news as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Pentecost Sunday is often a day when Lutheran Christians confirm young people. Not always, but often. It's a way to help the the young people remember the power of God's Holy Spirit in our world and in their lives. If you were to go into your green hymnal on page 198 and look up confirmation, you wouldn't actually find that word very easily, you would find affirmation of baptism. You see, affirmation of baptism is when students or adults say yes to the promises that their parents or their grandparents or their godparents made when most likely they were little little, bitty babies. Lutheran Christians believe that the Holy Spirit of God is present at the sacrament of baptism. That's why there's a dove over there on that red banner, because when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. But we also believe that God's Holy Spirit is with us now on Pentecost, but every time also that two or three are gathered in Jesus' name. That's the part of God that's with us whenever we're together. Next weekend is Trinity Sunday, and I'm pretty sure that Pastor Dave will have more to help you understand the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit thing. But for today, I want to remind us all of Jesus' promise to us through the power of the Spirit. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another, an advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because the spirit of truth abides in you and will be with you. We believe in the words of our Lord Jesus. We believe that the Holy Spirit will be in us. Maybe not with a tongue of fire on top of our heads. Maybe not even speaking French or German or Greek. But still, the power to do good for God's sake. There are so many needs for good. There's so many opportunities to do good and to fight evil. Pentecost might be considered the end of the Easter season, but more importantly, it's a beginning. The beginning of life as a church. Just like the beginning of life as a baby, You have to take little small steps, learning to sit up and learning to roll over and learning to walk. Pentecost is the beginning of our life in faith. And as we have discovered for the past 2,000 years, the Christian life is sometimes easy, sometimes challenging, sometimes interesting, sometimes discouraging. But no matter what happens, Pentecost is a call to action, a call to doing what God wants us to do. About 10, 12 years ago, everybody was wearing these WWJD bracelets. Remember those? It was a fad. It came and went. It made for a good sermon illustration back then. But it still applies today. 
Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has promised to be with us when we do God's will. And that Holy Spirit will help us to figure out what God's will is and to carry it out, no matter what day of the year it is. Come, Holy Spirit. Nurture your church. Enlighten our lives. For this we thank you and we praise you. Amen.